Welcome to Sick Baggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve. Today, super excited to get the ST back up on the lift. And today I'm going to be shooting one of those install videos that I get pretty excited about, and that's exhaust. Now, over the last six years on this YouTube channel, I've installed quite a bit of exhaust on here, showing you from A to Z how to get your old stuff off and get the new stuff on. And we've even covered some tunes briefly. And even today, probably just cover the tunes a little bit briefly with you to show you what you need to do there's so many different tuners out there and uh you know harley davidson warranty information all that stuff and that's for a whole nother video but at the end of this video i will show you what i did to get this bike tuned but today we have the two brothers racing two into one shorty for the touring model you can see it right here on the screen you can get this in polished you can get this in black and you can get this in stainless now doing a performance bagger build of course we went with the stainless and we got the heat shields as well there's a lot of pipes out there on the market that don't have heat shields so having the options for heat shields is a big thing for me i don't know how many of you out there rode a two into one shorty pipe without heat shields they will cook your leg so having that option was pretty cool with the uh, TBR pipes. So out of all of the two into one shorties that are on the market, Steve, why in the heck did you pick a TBR? I'll tell you, this company has been around for ages. I've been riding motorcycles for a long time and as far back as I can remember, there's always been two brothers racing. Now this company started out as a racing team. It was two brothers, imagine that, two brothers, Kevin and Craig, and they started out racing Ducatis and Hondas back in the day, and uh, they were really good at what they did. They did all their tuning and perfecting parts over time, and they just really kind of dominated the classes back in the day, and that raised a lot of eyebrows even outside of the racing world. And a little bit later on, they went into just manufacturing the parts that they were making, so people like us could have cool stuff for our bikes. So thank you to Kevin and Craig for that, for providing us with a badass pipe to put on our bike 30 something years later. So I just wanna say up front, none of this that we're gonna be doing today is hard with a few simple tools. You can get your old exhaust off, you can get your new stuff on. Hopefully at the end of this video, you'll be super comfortable with the process and you'll be able to go out and do it because it is pretty easy to do. Um, but if you're not comfortable with it, please take it to a shop to have it done. We got quite the day ahead of us, so let's get the camera over here and let's get this install started. Now, I briefly wanna go over with you what's inside the box real quick so you know what you can expect when you get it. You will get the pipe. I'm gonna go ahead and take this stuff out of the plastic as we go through this. So this is the stainless version. As you can see right there, it does have a pretty cool black tip on the end of it. You've got a set of heat shields in here. You've got one of your pipes here. It's a good thing to go through all of this before you actually start tearing into the bike, just so you can make sure that you have everything before you start. Now you've got one heat shield here, one heat shield here, so I'm just gonna set those together. And then of course, our bag of goodies. Inside the bag of goodies, you do have instructions. You can also find these online in PDF form. So inside this bag, you're gonna have everything you need. You get a couple of converters for your O2 sensors, a couple of springs, a couple of bolts, which we'll cover all of that as we're installing it. You got a little spring puller here. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but uh, when you get done with it, put this in your toolbox. It's actually for pulling and hooking those springs. And of course, some awesome toolbox stickers. We get kind of excited around here when we get free stickers with stuff. So that's pretty cool that they put those in there. So we're just going to set that stuff off to the side right now because we need to take a few minutes and come over here and get all the stock junky stuff off the ST. Cold start on stock. Prepare to be underwhelmed. <laughs> So the first thing you want to do is get the bike upright, make sure that the pipes are cool, get your saddlebags off, get your side covers off, get your seat off. On the back, back here, you have a hanger bracket with two bolts going down into the slip on back here. That's, you're going to need a half inch socket for that. Then we come over here where our crossover pipe goes underneath the bike. You're going to have an exhaust clamp there and one here for this slip on and same for the slip on on the other side. And that, weirdly enough, is a 15. Now, after that, you're going to need an 8 millimeter to get the, uh, like, radiator clamps off that hold these heat shields on. First thing I'm going to do is take my 8, go ahead and get these clamps off. We'll get these heat shields out of the way so we can actually see what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and run those clamps all the way out. Now back here, we're gonna take our 15. We're gonna go ahead and loosen this clamp and the crossover clamp. They're right, right beside each other.
and go back here to our half inch bolts. So we're no longer going to need this plate back here anymore so we can just pull that out of the rubber. It's just like an isolator to keep it from vibrating. Pull that plate out. Now when you're breaking the slip on away from the header, it can be seized up on the header. Uh, make sure that that clamp is completely loose on there and then you can come here to the back of the bike. You can give it a little push. You don't want to do a whole bunch of push and turning and bending on it. But if that doesn't break it free, you can always use one of these rubber strap wrenches. Strap that on there. And we can actually give it a little turn like that. And that's make sure it is broke free from the header. We know it's broke free now because it's spun. And then you can just kind of wiggle it and pull and that'll come right off. So we're gonna come here to the other side, go ahead and take our heat shield off. Grab our 15, go ahead and get this exhaust clamp off. I'm gonna grab our half. Come back here, give it a little push, a little pull. Pull that one off. Now we're gonna go underneath the bike to the crossover pipe. There is a bracket back here on the crossover pipe that attaches to the back of the transmission here. It's one single bolt. We can pull that one out. And this one right here is gonna be a half inch as well. So we're just gonna put a ratchet wrench on that. So we don't have a whole lot of room between this bolt and the tire. Get that off. We've already loosened this bracket here. So we just give this a little pull. Now we got a heat shield here. We got a clamp here and then a clamp over here on this side. Up here on the front, we've got one up here and then one down here. So now that we have those undone, it's ready to go. We need to remove this right side floorboard. It's gonna make installing our new set a lot easier as well. This is gonna be a 5 16 Allen. So we're gonna go ahead and break these loose. And Harley Davidson has certainly used way too much Loctite on these two bolts. My God. My God. Now we can push this brake pedal down and get this out of the way. Holy crap, I've never had a set of floorboard brackets come off that hard. All that white residue, that's those little like Loctite patches that they use that they put on the bolts and then run them in. But good Lord, I thought I was gonna snap that bolt before that thing came out. So I've left the front one in. It's just not necessary to go ahead and take it all the way out. You can if you want to, but all you need to do is get access to this pipe. And then right here, we have another bracket, as you can see, with a nut right there. So we need to get that removed. Like, thank God on that one that I had a good set of uh, Allen wrenches. And it's actually this set here near the carbine. I'll put a link down in the description, but I've never had one of these break going on two years. And you've seen how tough that was and uh it did not break i mean it's a pretty good size one i you know any smaller than that it might have but that carbine set's been awesome that's the master hex and torch kit and it's about a quarter of the price of the snap-on one and uh, so far it's treated me well so we have to get this bolt out so we have to get this nut off next right here that one's going to be a half inch again this nut off now before we go any farther with the pipe we're going to unplug our o2 sensors you can follow these right here there's a black and the gray plugs they come down here they wrap around here they get zip tied off here and then they come through here they're zip tied off down here one will go to the rear cylinder one will go to the front cylinder so what we're going to do is just start cutting the zip ties just remember where they were so you can always put zip ties back 
So this one's the rear pipe. We follow it back here and it should be black. So the best way that I've figured out how to remember which O2 sensor goes in which pipe is just remember the old ACDC song, Back to Black. Your back wire, your back pipe is gonna go to the black plug. We can go ahead and unplug these now. Now this one's gonna be zip tied off on the bottom of the bike as well. I'm not gonna be able to get the camera down there, but just follow the wire all the way up to the front and cut those zip ties. So if you follow the header pipe back up in here, you'll see a flange. On each side of that flange, you're gonna have a nut. You're gonna go ahead and take those nuts off. The one on the front's a little bit harder to get to. The rear one's pretty easy to get to. Gonna pull those nuts out. So that flange is now loose from the back of the motor. Now we go up here, we got the same thing up here. Like I said, this one, a little bit harder to get to. This one isn't too bad. So this one up here, I usually go between the A-frame here in the front, half inch wrench. Make sure you don't bang your finger. You can use a box end wrench. It's usually generally not super tight, just like that one. Um, once you get it loose, you can just take your fingers and go ahead and take it off. Now we just come over here and grab it at the bottom like this. And I usually just give it a gentle pull like that. Now that clamp is off. You can move that stupid thing get that one out of the way so i will bring this back bring this front down and around like this and then we just slide it off the back so don't pull your header pipe off and then walk away with it and that thing's stuck in there you can pull it up here where it's a little wider now and get that off so i got our old header and our new header pipes over here on the table i'll show you how to take these flanges off and remove the o2 sensors first thing you want to do is grab an 11 16 wrench and we're going to go ahead and bust these loose side now on these flanges it has a ring inside here like you can just get a little flathead screwdriver kind of pop that up if it's not separated now you can take a flathead screwdriver and just work this off but i don't like doing that i have these uh, piston rings like these snap ring pliers you just set them in there it grabs the ends of them and pulls it apart and you can pull it off and then you don't take the chance of like running a screwdriver in here and warping these of course you can take this off as well remember how this goes back on your pipe this side is flat this side has the ring so when you put it back on of course the ring goes towards the engine with this ring in here I'm gonna do the same thing on this side go ahead and pop that ring out put our pliers on it Pull it apart, take it off. Go ahead and pull that off. Now we're gonna pull our front pipe up into place. It is the long one of the two. So then we're gonna get in our hardware bag and get these two bags out. And you've got an adapter and actually a plug. So depending on what kind of pipe you're running. But if you notice, these don't fit. So we have to put the adapters in. So we're gonna get our O2 sensor adapters, our copper washers. Then our service manual tells us to apply a tad bit of anti-seize on these before we install them. We're gonna do that to the actual O2 sensor as well. I'm gonna bring our front one over here. Go ahead and put these on. Now there is a torque spec on these, but I generally just put them on and snug them down. Just like that. Now we wanna put our O2 sensors back in. Once again, just a smidge of anti-seize don't want to get this stuff all over the sensor back one is black remember so we're going to put this in going to get our 11 16s back out snug it down get our wrench tighten it down now we don't need the plugs on these set those off to the side we're going to put our flanges back on remember this side here goes up so we're going to slide that in slide that back on and set that back into there same thing on this one put our flange on make sure our indent is facing up get our pliers 
that back on. So at this point, I'm gonna grab a couple zip ties, put right here below this flange. Make that tight like that. That allows that to stay up here at the top instead of sliding down your pipe when you're trying to put these on. Just makes it a little easier. Now at this point, these two pipes are ready to put on the bike. But before we do that, we need to grab a hardware kit and get back over to the bike and get this hanger installed. Rewind that beautiful beam footage. See this guy right here? This was a week ago, and this guy right here had the flu and didn't know it. About three hours after installing the O2 sensors back in these pipes and getting ready to call it a day, and we'll finish it up in the morning, putting it on the bike, I came down with the flu. About three hours, I was running 101 temperature, ended up going to the hospital. So this is right at seven days later, and I'm still only about 80%. And that's good enough to get out here and finish this install. But I'm here to let you know, um, don't get the flu this year, because that was freaking horrible. Uh, but anyway, let's get the camera over here and let's start getting this installed on the bike. So right over here on the transmission door, you've got a bolt here and a bolt here. We have to remove these two bolts so we can install our rear hanging bracket like this. That's going to leave these two holes in our bracket right here. And on the back side of this, we've got a couple of clip nuts we have to put on here. And that's where those bolts are going to go on to hold the slip on. So we're going to take a quarter inch Allen and we're going to remove these two bolts. Inside your hardware kit, you're going to have four bolts. You're going to have two short ones and two long ones. We're going to take the two long ones here. The two short ones are the ones that go in the back of the pipe. A little blue Loctite on these two bolts. We're going to take our half inch, run these in. Now on the back side of the header, you're going to take this clip nut, making sure that the nut is down inside here and you have the hole exposed on the outside. You're just going to clip these on just like that. So before I put the pipe on, I want to address the gasket that's in there, the exhaust gasket. So on this bike, it's brand new, barely has any miles on it. I inspected the gaskets and they're actually fine. There's nothing wrong with those gaskets that are in there. Um, the pipe was put on correctly, so it didn't crunch the gasket in any way. But I'm going to drop in a little video here from a past video that I did that shows you how to change these gaskets. We're going to get our pipe up into place making sure our wire doesn't catch on anything. We'll slide this up in here, get our flange on. Let me try to get this front nut started. Get the rear one started. And you just want to get those started. Cut that zip tie off. Do not tighten those down at this time. We're going to do the rear one. You're not really going to be able to see what I'm doing up in there, but we're going to get this rear one on. We're going to go ahead and route our O2 sensor wire back the way it was before, right down here. So we want to bring this one up, go back through here, take our black one, put it through, and go ahead and plug our sensors back in so we can see what we need to do with the excess wire here. So before we torque everything down and we can still kind of move the pipe a little bit, we want to make sure that we don't goof up that gasket in there by moving it a lot. But we're going to bring our slip on into place and we're going to go ahead and slide our exhaust on. That way we can move the pipes a little bit if we need to, to get these to go on. With everything loose, we're going to take the short black bolt come in from the back side. We're going to push this exhaust up onto that bracket and that can be a little bit of a booger but as long as you have these pretty loose where they can move around you shouldn't have too much trouble with it it's just hard to do for me get my hand back here and try to get this bolt in if i got one started so we're going to take our half inch ratchet wrench and get in here so it's just easier try to get that one to start Get this other bolt in here. Let's see if we can't find the hole on that bracket. Get both of those started. It's 
so now we have it in place i can go ahead and put the springs on you can put the springs on before they go on the back side back here you can do that before you put this on there but honestly it stays in place without them so the instructions tell you to put the springs on and then put the clamp on the back so you do it however you want to do it um, the springs that go on the back you'll feel back here a little notch that's in the middle of this right on the other side of this there's one notch and that's where both springs are going to hook into that and then you've got a hook sight on the pipe and a hook sight on this pipe but remember the little spring puller that i talked about earlier if any of you have ever put together a trampoline this is exactly how you put the big springs on a trampoline you're going to take this i'm going to hook this side take the other side reach in there hook it on the exhaust pipe right then I'm going to pull this back and hook this onto the header pipe and then pull this out. Can't really see that on the camera while I'm doing it, but that's what I'm doing. So I'll show you. So I've got that hooked on the actual exhaust pipe. Now I've got to get in here and fish that spring. Now I've got a hold of the spring. And then down here, it's right on the other side of this right here. So you do have to give it a pretty good pull. And you can't really see a lot of what's going on. But let's pull it. Now it's hooked. Now I just got to fish this thing out like that. You can see how they're hooked both back there. The bottom one goes to this one. Top one goes to this one. Hopefully you can see that back there. So you hook them both there and then one to each pipe. And that's what holds that together. And plus the fact that you have a bracket back here with this. So this isn't going to move anywhere. Now we get ready to run the flange nuts down on the headers. You're going to have two sets of torques for each one. 9 to 18 inch pounds and then 100 to 120 inch pounds. 9 to 18 inch pounds on all four bolts first. And then we'll come back with our torque wrench set to 100 to 120. So the 9 to 18 is just making sure that you're seating the exhaust pipe on that gasket and not pulling one side down and the other side down and screwing up that gasket in there. I'm still going to go back and forth a little bit. If I feel it go a full turn and turn and a half, I'll go ahead and move it to the back one. Okay. We'll go to the front. Okay. Now we'll go up here to the front one. Sneak this in. Get a swivel for the front one. And we'll go ahead and get that one on. 105 inch pounds. And even this, I still go ahead and do it back and forth. Don't just uh, crank down. 105 inch pounds on one of these. Alright, so those are all torqued down now. We're going to double check our O2 sensors to make sure that we're not impeding anything we're not going to squish any wires or anything when we hit our brakes which from here i'm going to cut the camera go ahead and put my floorboard back on and you know just one bolt that we took out to drop that floorboard make sure everything's tightened back up and then from there we'll go ahead and go into the tune once you torque down those exhaust flanges it's done it's on the bike now over on this side of the bike right here you've got this red plug this is where you're going to plug in your tuner like I said, I use the Power Vision, and I'm going to briefly cover the Power Vision. Now, the reason I use this Power Vision is because we own multiple bikes, and I can use one tuner for multiple bikes, unlike the other tuners that are on the market where you buy the tuner you plug it into the bike and then it's married to that bike what this does is allows me to marry a tune to a vin and instead of buying a tuner every time we buy a bike all i have to do is pay the 200 dollars roughly for a new tune now once you do that you can take the power vision plug it in turn the bike on and you'll go through here and read the ECM. And that's what it's doing right now is reading the ECM. It's going to lock in 
the VIN number and all the data for this bike into this tuner. Once this is complete, we'll take this back into our computer and we'll plug it into the computer. We'll open up the PV2 program uh, that you can download from their website. And then we'll go through that PV2 program to pull the license that I bought from the website, put it on there, and then that'll unlock the tune. And you'll have to select the VIN number or, or the SVT number, and it will lock that tune to this bike or this VIN number. This is our STK number. I'll turn the bike off, unplug this, and I'll take you into the editing room, and we will update the tuner from there. So up here in the middle screen, you'll see the DinoJet PowerVision Win PV. And you can download that from the website and then install it on your Mac or your PC. Go ahead and get it open, which we have it open here. Uh, right over here is our PDF instructions that they sent me. And it says I have credits. I have one it's because on the website earlier, I had purchased another tune. We're gonna plug the PowerVision in to the computer we're going to get the stk from the pv and we know it's that 22 right there those are the two 14s that i have on there um, so we're going to click that 22 we're going to click get so that pulled that information from the tuner into the program now stk information for 22 vin number software level are you sure this is the file you want to lock to if so, this will use one token to create the license. So we're going to click yes. Now you're ready to tune. So let's get back out to the bike now that we're all loaded up on here. And I'll show you how to put the tune on the bike. All right, so we got the tuner plugged back into the bike. Going to reach over. Keep the ignition on. Now I've loaded a tune that's for an open air cleaner, which is high intake two into one exhaust and that's all we need when you go in and look at the tunes you have to select what air cleaner you have and if you have two into one or two into two um, all that good stuff they're different ones uh, if you have uh, you know air cooled bike or water cooled bike so i picked an air cooled uh, high intake which is you know a open air cleaner and then a two into one pipe so that's what we have and we saved it to slot five so we're going to select that tune we're going to select it, comes up, um, it's upgraded. It'll say 2021 on it. This is a 22, even the 23s say 21, uh, but it's upgraded. So when I went to select the tune and put it in the uh, Win PV program, it said the tune was out of date and needed to be updated. So I did that. So we're gonna click continue and then we're gonna click flash. You'll hear it clicking and doing all kinds of good stuff as it's actually preparing and tuning uh, the bike. Do you want to reset learned fuel trim values? This is necessary only if you've changed any air fuel related parameters, which we have. Um, you've changed how much air is going into the bike. Um, we have, you know, no cats in the headers there. So we're gonna click yes. And I'll tell you right there that it's riding part one of two. So I'll cut the camera until this is done and then we'll, and I'll show you what it says. All right, so it's all done. It says, please turn key off and wait 10 seconds before turning key back on. Now that our tune is in and I've got my floorboard back on, we did this while I was waiting on all that other stuff. Uh, this pipe does come with or without heat shields. Ever rode one of these bikes that just has this raw pipe on there like that? Looks really cool. Uh, gets really hot. Heat shields are really simple. So very important from here, and I didn't address this a while ago and I should have, before you start this bike, make sure that you take a rag with some rubbing alcohol and wipe these pipes down. If you've got any grease or oil from your fingers on this pipe, it will tarnish that pipe. It'll cook that fingerprint or that oil right into that pipe. Let's see what a cold start sounds like with the two brothers, two into one shorty.
So now we're going to take the bike out to the highway with the help of my son. Hopefully we can get some video of some uh, soft takeoffs, some hard takeoffs, and then of course a drive-by so you can hear what the bike sounds like like that. so that's it pretty excited about that pipe had no idea how it was going to sound once i got it out on the highway and i'll tell you i had that full face helmet on but i was grinning ear to ear as soon as i pulled out of that driveway and hammered on it that is a good sounding pipe so like i said in the beginning of this video easy install it's a little bit time consuming there's a couple of little things you need to do but honestly it takes longer to take the stock junk off of this bike than it does to put this uh this two into one from uh two brothers racing now having that pipe on there with a stage one and a proper tune really woke this bike up and it definitely let me know that i have my ass strapped to it when i took off out of the driveway so um, super impressed with the pipe if you want to get your hands on one of these you can find them all over the internet i'll link them straight to the two brothers racing website where you can go over there and check them out if you found this video helpful please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon to let you know every time we upload a video we, because we have over 200 videos now i think with the touring and the soft tail uh, it's going to be installs and maintenance videos as well so maybe you're looking how to change your oil or uh, change your brakes or something like that we got all that on there as well so make sure to check out the rest of the channel tell your friends about us i'm going to get out of here and get myself back to work i hope to see you in the next video but until then as always be safe keep your knees in the breeze thanks for checking out the video don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe popping up over here and don't forget to check out the rest of the channel because we have a ton of bagger related and soft tail videos on our channel and to get you started maybe you can check out this one or this one I'm not really going to say anything else you can just click one of those and take it over to another video